Ladies and gentlemen, we have here with us all the way from Durban, Mr. Sid Kitchen. Thank you very much. God bless you. I'll play a song um, just because I can. So here I am, I'm 56. What keeps me walking down this road where there's no fucking lights on anywhere? Okay. Um, well, I have a song. Out of all the music that was going to apartheid in South Africa in the 80s, Sid, who was just his own thing altogether, you know, he was undeniably African and undeniably South African, uh, but he was white. Is he a white South African? <laughs> I don't know. When I met Sid Kitch, I don't know. When I met Sid, I, I, I don't know. I didn't think he was white. I thought he was a bit off white. <laughs> that are Anglo-Saxon and African, so I embrace both of those roots. He's an amazing man, amazing musician, great musician, and I suppose were it not for the era of, of the boycotts, you know, of South African artists abroad, he would have long made it as an international artist. if Sid had gone overseas. Um, I think he would have been recognized as one of the great musicians of our time. Definitely. Sid could be a rock star, my friend. But he's here in Devon. Still cool.
house by flute. It's a Zulu thing. Step up, we got the African dream. Renaissance, people on the move, post-colonial dance. Some with vision, pushing transition, change what's going on. We got some space internet, certified, disconnect, operate, calibrate, designate, liberate. Yeah. Who are the people living in our states? I was born in Durban in 1951, and I grew up in a working class neighborhood. All I had as a kid, as a working class kid, was sport, the radio, and the church. Nothing else. Right there. The church is alone to the home. What's that? What's the significance? I was a choir boy. That's where I learned to sing. In church choir, I used to sit in those pews from about the age of nine, ten. It's about 13, 14. But as to his childhood and how it shaped him, I actually couldn't answer on that because his childhood was never something we all discussed. It wasn't, wasn't ever something we spoke about. And... Ah, this house, Jesus. This house I grew up in. Certainly his family that come from, I hate to say, like I've... The other side of the tracks. Later years, I only started hearing maybe a little bit of this and a little bit of that that happened, and I was like, wow, I never knew. You take some people that have a difficult childhood, you gotta let it out somewhere. You gotta let it out somewhere. So that's what happened. I started to sing in public every Saturday night. The lights would come on, all the people would come around the stage, gather around, and this little 13 year old would come up and I'd be featured, do three or four songs. We look at the city of Durban. Very often in South Africa is referred to as a cultural backwater. What keeps him to this small place? They are not the opportunities that someone like Sid deserves. We, we are going to Sipo Gumedi's grave. Sipo Gumedi, he was a really good friend. He was a fantastic bass player. I see there's no flowers on his grave, so I brought flowers with him. Like, I was born in Durban, the same as Sipa was. Who knows, I might die in Durban the same as he would, but we're both Durban boys, you know. We were friends in the same little revolution. And I'd kind of like, I'd bump into him at festivals and at, uh, at clubs in Durban, all over the place, I'd bump into Sipo. And the first thing he'd always do is he'd say, hey, bro, Sid, and he'd fucking give me a big squeeze. That Sipo squeeze was cool, man. Made you feel like you were like kind of part of Africa, you know. So he died, he was like, Hey, he was uh, 53 years old, you know, 54 years old. That's, that's young. That's young, you know, to die with such talent. That's really young. So many of my musician friends are dead. And when they die, everyone does like a benefit concert because they die penniless. <laughs> and we all, you know, wow, he was such a great guy, we're gonna miss him, we're gonna miss him, but fuck it, dude, why didn't you do anything when he was alive? You know, why didn't you come to his gigs, or why didn't you buy CDs, or why didn't you make that phone call when you could? The other thing about Africa is that we lose people like this, and some asshole comes along and breaks off his fucking nose. I don't understand the logic of this place. Yeah. 
And these flowers I stole from someone else's grave, so I'm not really much ba much better than anyone else. But but the fact that I'm here to pay homage to him, hopefully, is enough. You know. Ye bon fue to my bra. Total basket works from day to day, hour to hour. I'm very cynical about this business, you know. I'm very wary of success because success seems to breed unsuccess. Where you've reached this pinnacle that might have lasted for one week or 15 weeks or 15 months or 15 years and then it's over. The moment you're successful, you're going to be unsuccessful. It doesn't mean that I'm not wanting it. I would love to have material resources so that I don't have to worry about my life or my children's life or my grandchildren's life or where I'm going to record next or how I'm going to be able to pay my bond next month. I would love to have that shit. That would be wonderful. I have nothing like that. I've got a life policy that will at least leave some money to my estate so that if I die like a fucking pauper, they can bury me properly. But that's about it. Mr. Saint Kitten! It's the biggest one in South Africa and it's the oldest one in South Africa. I've been a stalwart at that festival for 18 years. People know me there, they know me very, very, very well. One more song! One more song! One more song! Suddenly this year there seems to be an issue with booking me based on my performance last year. next. On the one hand they want to put me out to farm, but on the other hand they can't deny me. My life is a busk. Total busk. I don't know where I'm playing in April yet. I don't know where I'm playing in May. And that's the way this life works, you know. I picked up a gig for this weekend which just came out the blue. Boom, there it is. That's how my life works. I get a gig suddenly out the blue and it just changes the ball game. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So I'll come there with a fresh batch of songs that'll blow their hair back. Wish me luck as you wave. Me goodbye, cheerio, here I go, on my way. Wish me luck as you wave, me goodbye, cheerio, here I go, on my way. I don't know the rest of the words, wish me luck. Wow. To America. Yeah. 
and how long? For gigs, I'm going to go in July for gigs. July, August for gigs. To America? Yeah. But that's good. It means I'm busy. Okay? I, I must be honest. He's a big fish in a small pond. There'll be a small fish in a very big pond. Are the prospects as good for his type of entertainment? His kind of music, I don't know if you were into it, I don't, I don't think so. And obviously, I mean, he's been in this music game for donkey's years, many, many years from when he was very young. True. But just listen, just listen. There might be a bit of snow on the top of the mountain. Hopefully there's still some warmth in the valley. Betty, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wish me luck. As you wave me goodbye, goodbye. cheerio, here I go, go on my, my way. way. You made it, my man. That's that's a good thing. Uh, Sid is really excited about his trip here. You know, I'm I'm very curious about what's going to happen on this trip. What are people going to think about this guy? WBAI, and I am very honored to have Sid Kitchen, who is here in the studio right now with a guitar. I'm going to play you my seminal song that everybody in South Africa knows. Uh, it's called Africa is Not for Sissies. Okay, it's Sid Kitchen. Now, I don't know about Jews, but when I read the news, I get desensitized. You know the woman next door found a lion, lying on the kitchen floor. Dead for days, cops came, took her away. They put tape on her door. Now, what does that mean that Africa's okay. not for sissies? What happened was when we got out of democracy in 1994, a lot of white people left the country. Where did most of those white people go? Australia, Canada, England, as a, some like myself stayed who embraced that democracy. And there were those also who stayed who stayed reluctantly and complained. So I kind of wrote that song not kind of aimed at the people who've left, but aimed at the people who are staying and complaining, rather than trying to do something about the way, the way you are, you know? Packed up and I'm ready to go. Scared shitless and I want you to know that Africa is not for sissies, na 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 Africa not for sissies. Yeah, boy, yes. So my first gig in New York, isn't that funny? Yeah, it's like, um, it's almost fucking surreal, actually. I mean, I remember when I was like 19, and I had a band. My brother and I had a band. 
And we used to say, hey, one day we can play New York. Wow. Here I am. I'm playing in New York. Now, when we were kids, we discovered that we both um, had this, uh, this guitar stuff flowing through our veins. And uh, we started playing together. I was in the army and Sid was working on the, on the, in the railways, but uh, he always had this thing at the back of his mind. Uh, I'm getting out of this, uh, uh, I'm only temporarily working. A little bit of time now and I'm going to do this full time. I think Sid had the vision. I was the quiet guy in the background. I was the introvert. And that was lots of fun. It was really great fun. You know, these two 18 and 19 year olds, the backs of motorbikes carrying, carrying guitars on either side. It was really good. 75 was a great year for us. We were certainly at the pinnacle of the South African folk scene. Once again, for my life feels not the same without her. Recording companies in South Africa used to say, well, you go to America, go make it in America and come back and then we'll record you. You come and you go like a fire on a hill Like a song that will Conclude It was the times in South Africa, I guess. You just never had the breaks to get into, in, into the, the markets that counted. You just couldn't get anywhere near them. S Sydney has always had a great belief in us and our, and our music. Probably more so than me, otherwise I would never have um, given the whole thing up in 1977. I've often thought, well, what would have happened if we had have continued? I don't know. It's no good speculating about that. You know, we all choose a path and we have to live with those choices. So I wouldn't like to say anything more on camera about that if it's okay. Yeah, yeah, we won't. Cool, thank you. Yeah, put him on stage. So what does it look like? If I can connect with one person tonight, I've done my job. And that's it. One person, one person tonight in this audience, I've connected. Thank you very much. I, I, I was wondering what to play in New York, and then I thought, well, it's going to be who I am. Um, like, I call my music Afro-Saxon. I have Anglo-Saxon roots, and I have, obviously, African roots, which I embrace. Does it matter I didn't speak? Does it matter I have no voice? Does it matter I cannot cry? Does it matter I have no choice? I fall down on the floor. Hey, I fall down like before. Matter not what the cost. Matter not what the loss. Day, oh, let's see. Tell 
So cool. Yeah. Can you please focus on this man? This is Keith Linton. <laughs> He's a great producer and fine bass player and wonderful ex South African. Wonderful ex South African. <laughs> yeah, I saw his gig. He's a fantastic songwriter and a, a totally fantastic performer, guitar player, singer. And he's a poet as well as being a musician. So the words are really um, fantastic. And I would love to produce a record for him. I, I would love to. This project, uh, he's a very much a staple on the South African scene. If we were lucky enough to get the Ojoyo guys, Magiti played all that amazing bass on Paul Simon's Graceland record. Tony played the accordion and the keyboards. And they're both phenomenal musicians. Maybe even something could be worked out that I could produce something for Sid at Anton's studio, which is in Montauk. If we get the players I just told you about, Sid would probably have the product of his life. Are you around in the next 10 days-ish? Because I've got a, a friend here from South Africa and he's doing... I'm in. Awesome. Awesome. We've got all these expatriate South Africans living in New York. Heavyweight people. Oh, serious people. They played with everybody. Okay, so these guys have been living in paradise. But now here's this Afro Saxon boy who comes to town. Afro Saxon. Afro Saxon. And this weird eccentric bastard comes from Durban. And they're all going to connect with me. And we're going to do this album or whatever it is. Five songs. Keith Linton is someone who's gone across the water and become someone of importance. He can produce this thing. And I've got the song, it's called Fool in a Bubble. Sorry. Fool in a Bubble. Fool in a Bubble is the song. No one comes here with anger in their eyes. No one's born with a broken heart. The bells of life ring louder than thunder in the sky. Bring darkness to the eye. When you make a record, you never know which song is going to fly. My feeling at this time is that Fool in a Bubble could change his life. So here I sit like a fool in a bubble, my heart in trouble, my head in a mess. Games we play to find where we're going. We lose without knowing. We seldom care less. I've been here for three days now. I'm playing tonight here. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Durban. Durban. How are you doing? Sid. Ooh. Excited to see you play, man. They probably need some explanation about what I do, but I think if I play tonight with energy, irrespective of what the fuck I'm talking about, they're gonna love me. Packed up and I'm ready to go. I'm scared shit, and I want you to know. I can't stay, find the sea. Africa, stop the sissies. 
don't think I connected very well with the people, but yeah. yeah, but I mean, for the most part, like like original music, it takes it's very difficult. I mean, very rock, difficult. Rock, I know. I've yeah. been doing it my whole life. But I know yeah, that. so it's not not any different back mm. home, you know. Although you you're known there at this point. It's even it's fucking even harder here, because you know when I talk about Africa's not for sissies, they really don't know what I'm talking about. You see, the thing is, in, in 1994, we got a, a democracy. We got like the fucking apartheid regime fucked mm. off and we became like a new nation, like rainbow nation. That's my music. Yeah. I'm an Afro-Saxon. We had apartheid, which was like, um, people weren't allowed to associate with each other, you know, across the color line. No, no, no. No, like segregation? Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> They don't know the level of violence and, no. and, 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 and how many people are leaving. Yeah, droves, droves. People. Maybe they have to understand where I'm coming from. South Africa. Strange days. Morning tide rushes up gently, bringing shells, the treasures of centuries. Morning tide, I can hardly believe that the sea can be so immeasurably free. Strange days indeed. Total ideological blackout. We didn't have television. The newspapers were told what to report. So essentially, most white people really didn't know that there was a problem. And the seagulls are lazy. Flying loose. In the folk music game, we were all writing a certain kind of song. We weren't conscientized to anything that was going on in the townships. And the sea can be so immeasurably free. But that all changed with the riots in 76, you know. The same as the LA riots and the riots in Birmingham and all those marches in the 60s in America changed the consciousness of a lot of people who weren't aware of the problem up until then. So the same thing happened with the way people were writing. This was written in 1976. Soweto was on fire. High on the hill I watched the valley on fire. The flames licked at my heart. I saw a nation in a burning tire, the carnage tore it apart. Someone told me it's a bad, bad dream. Wake me up from this ugly scene, I don't want to be here no more. It's a nightmare, I can't even know. Someone tell me there's more than this. Tell me I got the right to wish. Maybe there's the only way down where the children play. And then, of course, in the 80s, the violence it got even worse. <laughs> down where the children play. A lot of white people left the country. We used to call it the chicken run. People leaving this country in their droves because they, they you know, didn't see a future for themselves and they were, they were worried about the politics and the violence. I don't, I, I don't think he, he could bring himself to leave, you know. And it was too much of the fabric, of the, of the resistance fabric within the, within the country, you know. And so he, he couldn't leave, you know. 85, I'm released, Waiting for the Heave, The Change. Best South African album of the 80s. It, it has as much to say to an international community as Paul Summers Gracelands did at the time. You know, and his songs were about, about leaving this place, about, about the madness of this place. All of these were songs about being a white South African. And it became quite a political statement. Calling out Calling out like a fire rage into the sky Calling out, calling out like thunder in the sky
an eye to the faceless ones who know dedicated to the eventual release of Nelson Mandela. And four years later that happened. It's Nelson Mandela's birthday today. This is a song about Nelson Mandela that I wrote when he came out of jail in 1990. The dusty words have turned to clay in Kabbalah. The first verse talks about my impression of Sid Mandela. You know, the kind of image of him walking to freedom, walking out of jail, finally. You know, that was a very powerful image because you're like average white person being led to believe that he was a terrorist. Very few people knew what he looked like because his photo was never published in the paper. He came from somewhere no one knew He didn't look like me and you A bag of bones in an overcoat He didn't walk, he seemed to float Camelot, because suddenly we had this fabled place And that's what we were waiting for our whole lives, really, with the rainbow state Traveling on, you missed the turn off to paradise. Now here we are, we are, and all of us have traveled far, and each has come a different way. The songs our fathers wrote, we no more sing, they burn our throat. They choke us with those things. The dusty words of turn to clay Camilla Well, I heard cause... nothing wrong. You didn't get anything. Damn, that guy's good. <laughs> One take. Yeah. Beautiful part of the world, eh? Charges you up. It's basically about how no one is born born evil, really. I think life, the moment we're born, whatever starts happening to us, changes that. I think you're born pure. With the bells of life ring louder than thunder in the sky. The song has a personal connotation. Um, when I was t 25. 1977. Sorry, 1976, the year of the Soweto riots. Bang, my lung collapses. The condition I had, the lung can pop at any moment. It's a big black cloud that's hanging over your head like a sword of Damocles can fall at any time. So most people, I guess, when... We would have stopped the first lung collapse, yeah. So I didn't. I had a relationship where this lady was on my case all the time about smoking, saying I was going to end up in a bubble, you know, one day, requiring oxygen. Maybe she's right. With a broken heart, 
season like winds of change and the corridors of life and yeah. bells and you know it's just like nah. <laughs> spot on chat no you read it so great man wow anton fig blessed to have him on the album you know really it's a pleasure and the connection with home him and i I was going to ask him that. Do you do you ever go back to Africa? You know? Yeah, he goes back every year. Oh, like awesome! In December. Uh, he's done well for himself. You know, he's got that stable sort of situation in his life. Wonderful. Gives him time for his family. Time to do shit like this. I think he made the right decision. I think what's happened in the last 14 years that a lot of us who embrace the new South Africa have become a bit disillusioned. You're right, you're right, you're right, yes. you're right. Yes. You know, with corruption at the top of the government and nothing's being done about crime and, 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 and poverty and housing, you know, and, uh, and certain people enriching themselves. In 1994, everyone thought it was a miracle. Okay? Those of us who stayed and embraced it, threw ourselves into that whole thing. You can look at my music, man, you can see the euphoria. Well, I met Mandela in the early 80s, and we used to bump into each other at clubs. After Mandela got released, him and I could start playing together. I said to him, I really believe that it's our time and we must claim it, where people really have to mix it up to cleanse themselves of their ghosts of the past, whether you're black or white. Manji was a song that said, Now's our time, so it's Africa's time is our time. All our debts have been paid, and our notions have moved away. Hello, you, me, manje, manje. All those plans that we laid, they've given us a brand new day. Hello, you, me, manje, manje. Oh, we don't mind anymore, we got nothing left to say. Hello, you, me. Manje, manje. But set sail for the sun and go wherever the winds blow. Hello, you me, manje, manje. Manje skati sesi figile, sesi figile. Manje skati sesi figile, sesi figile manje. You know, with Madala Kunin, he said to me, the one day we were just parking off under the tree, smoking some dope and jamming our guitars, having fun, and uh, we were talking about the new South Africa. And you know, he turned around to me and said, he wishes it was like the old days when it was safe. I mean, it's coming from a black man who was confined to a township. That's like quite a blemish on the horizon in terms of like what we might have achieved 14 years down the line, you know. I mean, when, when Mandela was released, you know, when you had that, you had that heave that Sid is talking about. We all, we all were just wanting it to be over. You know, we're just wanting to be the Rainbow Nation. Um, but we have a huge hangover. Happy on the street, but when they go, nothing to eat, nothing to show. Only they love the race from above, keeping them going on. Just like reached a point now where people realize that nothing really has changed. Black people didn't inherit the wealth of this country. We had kids in pain, raised in a drain, sniffing cheap glue in a cobweb field. We got rape for 
find kids with guns, be your father's sticky smiles. One in three women in this country gets raped. It's a terrible statistic. And we've got the highest murder rate in the world per capita. Fucking ridiculous. We got violence in the air, hijacking in the street, anger and despair in every one of you. Polarization, marginalization. What happens is after success is unsuccess. So what do you do with that horrible letdown? I've become more vocal. How? Tell me. I wrote songs about Africa. I embraced the change. I embraced democracy. I fucking stayed there. I didn't run away to New York and fucking run away to fucking London or fucking New Zealand or fuck all. I fucking stayed there. I wrote songs about Africa. Because no one else seems to care about it. Fuck, we've done a lot, really. we've played five gigs. I think I've connected with people here. I think people have liked me, who've heard me. Those who've listened, others haven't listened. So there you go. Maybe they have to just set their bullshit aside and listen. Thank you for listening to me. This is my final song. Thank you. I'm fucking frustrated. I don't fucking say these things lightly, my friend. Jesus. The only way I'm going to get to sleep is to have a scotch. Double scotch. Boom, hit it back and go to sleep. Triple scotch. Triple scotch. Any kind of scotch. I don't give a fuck about whether people buy my music or not. Of course I care. Where well, I care, care because I'm a fucking poet. I care. I care if people are listening. You guys are welcome to my house. Well, we didn't know you were coming. We had to... the promoter of miscommunication. They don't even know who I am. That's the first point. Second point, there's no fucking sound. What must I do here? No, it's bullshit. It's like, uh, I've come all the way from Africa. It's, you know, I don't know where the fuck's going on here, you know? You know? Ah, uh, crust. Now, I must feel happy and play. I'm fucking happy. I'm not fucking happy at all. I want to have a drink, I'm going to have a drink. Yeah, nobody does. Yeah, I'm 57 years old. I'm 57 years old, for fuck's sake. Do you have a beer? And we don't. No, no beer. Vodka. Vodka is something. For the Bible tells me so. Come on, Daniel. Can't you be allowed? Can't you be allowed? Can't you be allowed? Can't you be allowed? We had a radio interview in about five minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. You got a phone? <laughs> yeah. Hello, Sid Kitchen. Okay, I'm I'm a uh, guitar player, sort of poet. Uh, wow. Yeah. Um, okay, no, I'll just sing you something. Uh, Step up, we got people on the street, nowhere to go, nowhere, nothing to eat, nothing to show, only their love, grace from above, keeping them going on. We got kids in pain, raised in a drain, stripping sheep glue in a carb milk view of heaven. Is there anybody out there? I have a life back in Africa, yes. I have a life. I have a life back in Africa, yes. I just want to go home. You know, I've had enough now. I just don't feel the same anymore. I'm sorry.
I'm gonna put that in my uh, in this bag. I need um, I need my um, um, I don't think I need this. Uh, how would I sum up my New York trip? Um, wow, um, surreal, um, sublime, um, frustrating. Um, and, uh, yeah, I got drunk this morning. Yeah. I woke up at six o'clock and I thought, fuck it, I'm gonna get stuck into the vodka. And I did. So now I'm going home and I'm pissed. On the one level, I'm like, um, I'm totally in control, but on the other level, I'm like, spinning out. Spinning out. Three months later, I decided to return to South Africa, Cape Town, where Sid was on tour. I didn't really know what to expect. Yeah, I was just know. saying, last time he had long, long hair. <laughs> exactly, you look. How many years younger? Yeah, Cutting off your hair, you look a good 20 years younger. Well, I tell you what. I am the proud owner of a bottle of Jemison's single malt Irish whiskey, yes. Triple distilled, whatever the fuck means. That, that means that. Wait, wait. The melting pot, yeah. Is this pre-show ritual? This is pre-show ritual, yeah. Now we're gonna have a cigarette. I thought uh, we're going, going to Cape Town with Sid. Gonna be doing some gigs along the way, and just like that kind of, uh, just keen to kind of get out and play. And I suppose I had some inkling that that it could be very hectic, like I. But uh, yeah, I had no inkling that it was going to be as intense as it was. That makes sense. Yeah, there's no one here, which yeah. is cool. I mean, the melting. You started to drink about a quarter bottle of whiskey uh, early in the morning, every day. We have no audience, but we're going to have a fucking ball, right? <laughs> right, that's the thing. Who's coming? You're like, let's get some people here, huh? Who's not coming? Everyone's not coming. <laughs> <laughs> We have here with us all the way from Durban, Mr. Sid Kitchen. Let's give him a real classic Cape Town welcome. No, I need a cigarette. This is what, what, what? Okay, I play a song um, just because I can. Um. <coughs> no one's born and fucked up. Life fucks us up. So here I sit, like. Sid's health worries me, and I've spoken to him about it. And I see him walking around with a bottle of whiskey right now, and it doesn't make me feel good. What's the problem with whiskey? Chill with me, fucking asshole. Fuck you, fucking talking to me. I'm trying to fucking listen to you. And I just thought, you know, well, fucking get a wake up already. What happens now? We're going. We're going through Scarborough to Cape Point, around Simon's Town, back to Fishhook. So you go right around the toenail of Africa, little thing at the end next to Cape Town. And you can watch a storm coming from the horizon, a big black wall getting closer and closer. And you know, in half an hour, it's going to hit, it's going to hit town, big town. It was last minute. I mean, I saw some commotion up front. I just put on a little bit of brakes and look into my rearview mirror. I saw an emergency vehicle. I saw a foster going there right on top of us and spinning. Somehow we launched off the beginning of the, of the side barricade on the road. And then you feel you're not on the road anymore. You're just flying. We plummeted 35 meters off a fucking ravine. Hello. Bah. 
I fainted. My tongue was hanging out, my eyes were rolled back. I felt myself going down this tunnel with amazing images flashing past me like <laughs> fucking ridiculous. The following week, apparently, a car just turned over once, landed on its hood, and both occupants died in the same area. So we were lucky that we landed on the side of the car, so we both lived. Oh, God. My ribs are sore. Yeah. I've got four ribs broken here. He had sore ribs. He got drugs from the doctor, and then the doctor was like, I don't worry, you can take these drugs with the booze. Like, that accident pushed him, because then he started to drink more, you know? Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> ah, here I sit like a fool in a bubble. My heart in trouble. <laughs> My head in a bed. <laughs> ah, fuck. <coughs> Sid needs help. This car crash really kind of, I thought maybe that would shake him to see how precious, how close he came to losing his life. The fact that he walked out of that crash is an absolute miracle, no doubt about it. So I would say that currently Sid is at a crossroads. Um, he doesn't probably know it. Uh, he's probably refusing to even look at it, I don't know. Um, I've been at crossroads in my life and I've done a lot of self-work. I've worked as a psychologist, I've worked as a psychiatrist, I've studied psychiatry myself. Um, I've worked in men's groups, I've run men's groups, uh, I've been a facilitator. I specialise in regression work, taking people back into their youth because that's where the, the, the wound occurs. So there's a wound there, a big wound, and that's what Sid needs to look at. So I would say that the work needs to start, needs to start in his head. He needs to get clear on, on what's happening and why he is in a self-destruct mode. Just one cigarette after the other, one lung, I don't know if he's got two lungs back, and drinking, I don't know how much whiskey. If he wants to, he can carry on going the way he is, and I'll give him two or three years, I'll be honest with you. And I don't know what his wound is, I've done men's work, and I don't know what it is. Okay, uncle. Not going to be the easiest thing, what I have to say here. <laughs> I have always been concerned, well, not always, but... Uh, <coughs> okay, so cut to the chase. Okay, cut into the chase is that... Um, I'm, I've been wondering, you know, what's with all this whiskey? Yeah. Walking around with a bottle of whiskey, slugging the whiskey around, yeah. pissed every night, um, unclear on stage, Oh, really? Unclear, I don't get you clear. Your eyeballs are red and bloodshot. Your skin looks like shit. You look like shit. Um, your energy is fucked. You're like a wino up on the stage, my bro. I'm giving it to you straight. You're just shifting the park bench onto the stage. I'm really concerned that you've got maybe two or three years to go. And then your body is just going to go gadish. And that's a tragedy. My feeling is that um, you need help. Oh, we all need help. Yeah. Look, I understand, no, but I don't think I should be punished. I should. No, no, no. I don't want to be punished. No, I'm no really punishment, China. Come on. I started crying. Just fucking tears started flowing out of me. Like, what the fuck's going on here? Then this whole story came and surfaced. Boom. It just surfaced. My father. Stanley William Kitchen, he was a railway worker. He used to work from six in the morning until nine at night. Essentially, it was, my dad was kind of like, like he wasn't around. So this guy over the road, he was like 16 and I was like five. He was like my big hero. You know? He used to hang out with me and kick a ball with me. And I loved this guy because he was like my father figure. So I left this guy. And one day I went to see him in his house and next minute I was in his bedroom and he had me on the bed and he was lying behind me and he put his fucking cock up my ass. I was just in a state of total fucking catatonic shock. 
So I went home, never told my brother, never told my parents, never told myself. Then this whole story came and surfaced. I could smell the room where he draped me. I remember what he was wearing. I remember, I remembered everything. It was just like, a, it was like I was watching a movie. Piece of music and I cry. This is good. Talk about how I was drinking, drinking whiskey. That's excessive. Long ago. No, no, no. Last three months, I've been, I've been having a problem. Uh, I've been drinking a lot of whiskey. You mean like how much? Uh, 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 Almost uh, a bottle a day. How about Jesus, that? Really? Yeah. That. So anyway, okay, I've stopped that. I've stopped that. I've stopped that. I can see changes in myself. Sure. The fact that I've finally taken a woman into my life and accepted love. I've never been able to accept love ever since I was raped when I was five years old. I've never been able to give love. Gemma is a nice young girl. That's really, really She's wonderful. A very nice She's the best thing ever happened to me. I've been aware of my drinking problem for years. For years. She's come and she's calmed those waters. She said, babes, we've got to stop that. That's got to stop. Why don't we grow old together like two leather shoes? She undoubtedly loves me. And that is absolutely the most beautiful feeling in the world for anybody to have. I'll be there for you, you'll be there for me. Here we sail into the sunset just like it's meant to be. So why don't we grow all together? So I got a call from Keith Lenton. The album was done and Keith felt it would be a good time for Sid to return to New York. Every single person, not, there's not one exception, when I've played them Sid's music, immediately people were just like, wow, this is great. And many of them have said, well, you know, this could be the thing that changes Sid's career. If Sid got some international success, everyone in South Africa would be really, really happy. The album hopefully will be released, God willing. Uh, the working title is Fool in a Bubble. Six, eight, ten, twelve. So here I am, yeah, at this place. I need an agent, I need a manager, I need to earn a living. Uh, worry about like America. I loved it, I loved it, I loved it, I loved everything about it. New York City. Oh, he's totally excited about that. That's like, see, that's the thing, that's, that's what's keeping him going. He thinks this could be his big break, you know. I believe it's got to do with how it's put out there, you know. We have to have that same band for touring live. If we can get Joe's Pub filled with the right people for the launch, press, small AR company, small label, nice hip label. I've got to do this shit now. It's late now. It's half past one. I should be there already. I've got to catch a plane, dude. You don't understand. I'm here to launch a new CD and to play with some outstanding musicians. We're launching at Joe's Pub with the South African All-Stars. I'm talking about Bakiti Kumalo on bass, Anton Fig on drums. This is an incredible place to launch an album because New York, if you can make some kind of little rumble, you're going to make a big rumble in the jungle. That's about it. You know. Where are we going? We're going to Putamayo. Yeah. We think they're going to take your record. You know, if they do it and they make it fly, that's fine. I must be honest, after 40 years, you know, you get a little bit cynical, eh? You can't believe. 
It's all very well to be positive, which I am. That's why I'm here. That's why it's important to be circumspect about this kind of shit, you know. I've been fucked by the best of them. Jessica, is that you? Yes. Hi. Hi. Josh, we spoke over the phone. Yeah, and great. This is Mr. Kitchen. Hello. Mr. Kitchen, how are you? Pleasure to meet, nice you. meet you. So I brought you some music. Great. Uh, this is the new album that we're launching with the South African All Stars. Okay, here we go. This is Soundcheck. I'm John Schaefer. Sid Kitchen has been a musical gadfly on the scene in his native South Africa since the 1970s. His biting lyrics and traditional South African rhythms have made a texture on the music scene. <laughs> If you want to see Sid Kitchen, and boy, you should, Sid will be playing on Friday the 24th with the South African All-Stars at Joe's Pub. How can you tell me I must go and film? It's my day off. Are you almost done there? No, oh. not really. Why? Well, just, Why? they're waiting. I mean, we kind of arranged... Who are they? Who are they? We kind of arranged their no, special... They're a musician, okay? I'm just going to say that. Who do I think it's going to be? If it could be anybody, who would, it, who would you want it to be? Bob fucking Dylan. Bob fucking yeah. Dylan. A great moment of truth. <laughs> Slippy sausage. Hey, no. No. <laughs> this is oh, right. such a nice surprise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now now we need to really structure Pete into the gig. The definitive reunion song. In the public park where people congregate. Oh, you're not even in tune, man. This <laughs> is the song. We'll work on these. We'll work on these. Um, good grief. 30, 30, 33 years ago. <laughs> Why so late? And I think, well, why not? Who cares when it starts? It's how you end the race, I think it matters. success when you connect with, with your peers and they appreciate what you're doing. And I think I've already been successful, you know, seriously. playing tonight. I'm hoping that people are going to turn out and come and see me. Is this for me? That's for you. Good. Okay. Oh, that's fucking crazy, dude. Thank you, thank you. Welcome. Welcome to South African Night. This song called Manji. Manji is Kati. Sesi All our debts have been paid and our notions have moved away. Hello, you and me. Manji, Manji. But set sail for the sun and go wherever the winds blow. Hello, you and me. Manji. 
ce mage Haceți ca ce se sfârie mage We got the African dream, renaissance, people on the boot, post around the old van. Trap with vision, push the transition, change what's going on. We got cyberspace, internet, search about this game, operate, calibrate, designate, liberate, yeah, I am. Oh, I do a miss, the summer night. I do a miss, the summer night. Thank you. Um, I'd like to welcome on stage my brother. I haven't played with him for 32 years, so welcome Pete Kitchen. I'm here for the inspection It's half past the night And the sky don't seem right In its glory and its might And its colors It's pale and it's grey It's the dawning of our age Into the vastness of sage With the turning of the page and it's empty now. No one says there's an easy road to walk. No one gives when they need to take Hey, but in this life all these crazy things uh, move us along our way Give us hope that there's another day I... Still here I sit like a fool in a bubble Welcome Jermaine and Siv's grandson Eric. And Siv Kitchen himself. Give him a round of applause, please. Siv, did you take Jermaine to be your lawfully wedded wife, for better or for worse, till death do you part? Yes, I did. Surprise for Sid Kitchen. This gentleman next to me here has been playing on splashy pen stages for 20 years. He hasn't missed one year. And this is to commemorate this gentleman who is a walking miracle, Sydney Kitchen.
working. It's all clear to me now. It's like a movie that I rerun in my mind. Something I can turn to when I'm lost and can't be found. Memory of a time I once knew. I made it all on my own. I took the pieces that were left lying on the floor, put them all together. That I hung in behind my door A remnant from a time I once knew Yeah, yeah All the while it was me Believe with a face at the glass Warm eyes with their lies in silence Fell down, bumped my but I got up to dance With the sound of a million voices In the distance calling I go walking Yeah, yeah I go walking Wherever I may go You'll be there with me in the corner of my heart Someone I can turn to when I'm lost and torn apart A memory of a time I once knew And whoever I may know You'll be there with me the softness of her skin A tattoo on my mind That just hates the state I'm in Remnant from a time I once knew Yeah, yeah All the while it was make-believe With a face at the glass Warm eyes hit their lies in silence Fell down, bumped my knee But I got up to dance With the sound of a million voices In the distance calling I go walking Yeah, yeah I go walking I go walking, walking. Mm -hmm. All the while it was make believe with a face at the glass. Warm eyes hit their lies in silence. Fell down, bumped my knee, but I got up to dance with the sound of a million voices in the distance calling I go walking I go walking walking I go walking